AM Events Glasgow Limited is a family-run business that specialises in the creation, planning and management of events, whether that be weddings, charity and corporate events, right through to the celebration and party events. We pride ourselves in customer satisfaction and have our clients at the centre of all that we do. Our best book services allow us to bring your dreams to reality. We offer our services from the smallest of detail to taking on the full event, releasing the worry from our clients and strive on exceeding expectations. Our showroom is open daily. Please pop in to discuss how we can help. Make sure you click the link to subscribe to my YouTube channel and also click the notifications button to be notified for when my next podcast goes live. You can also follow me on my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest is. I hope you enjoy this week's episode. Thank you. We're on. Today's guest, we've got Terry Mullins. Terry, how are we? Well, very well, thank you. First of all, thanks for coming on the show, Terry. No problem. Um, you're a leading, one of the leading polygraph experts in the UK. One of the reasons why you're on the show today is because you're the man who gave Luke Mitchell and his mum the polygraph test, which both passed with flying colours. But there's also a lot of sceptics asking questions why the courts can't use them and you can't release people from prison, you can... Um, lie on them and believe if you're that much a social path and believe your own lies you can trick them so today's to kind of give your side of things and let you have your say so first of all Terry how did it all begin for you how did you get into being one of the leading experts in the UK I don't actually like the word expert uh -huh. to be perfectly fair because I think we're always learning yeah so you can't be at the top of the game you have to do updated training and and obviously I was one of the original uh, three people in the UK to be trained in America uh, with polygraph. So it's just through my experience of 14 years that I'm um, probably more well known um, and I do a lot of high profile cases. When who came to you first for to do the polygraph with Luke Mitchell? It was the, uh, the I think it was the Daily Mail, a newspaper in Scotland that uh, contacted me. Um, and they asked me if I would be prepared to test uh, Corinne uh, Mitchell um, over the issue of her son. Uh, at that point, I had no knowledge or didn't. I was obviously seen it on the TV at some point, um, but I didn't have any other knowledge of that. But I agreed that um, I would test virtually anybody um, under the right conditions um, to see if they've. Yeah, because it's such a high profile case. Luke Mitchell has been protesting his innocence for the last 16 years. And the reason why I've been shedding light on it is because one of the reasons is the polygraph test. Um, you asked Luke Mitchell three questions. You also asked him each question three times. And you did the same with his mum and they both passed. Some people are calling Luke a sociopath and they say the lie detectors can be cheated. Guys like Ted Bundy's names we're getting thrown into the mix because he'd passed a lie detector can you explain that a bit why well obviously i can't explain the whole detail of people like ted bundy but mm -hmm. ted bundy was a sociopath psychologically unbalanced and in, in factual he should never have been tested we we have to be very careful um, about who we test and if somebody has psychological issues if they're sociopathic psychologically unbalanced split personalities we cannot test them because who are you testing you're not testing a, if you like, the norm of a person. So he was a diagnosed sociopath, Ted Bundy? Well, he's been diagnosed with having many uh, split personalities. He's got different personalities in the way, he's, um, the way his mind works. Uh, and he cannot be possibly um, be of a normal sense in his head because of some of the, you know, the crimes that he's committed. And look, make sure he wasn't diagnosed with any mental health or social path or he wasn't he was fine to do the one test. of the one of the first tests that one of the first requirements for myself when i go into a place like a prison or somebody who is on a high profile test uh, 
is I want to know, especially if they're in prison, have they gone through any psychological evaluations? Um, and if they are then deemed to have psychological problems, then I refuse the test because you cannot test them. When Luke was doing his test, he had his eyes closed. A lot of people are saying he had his eyes closed because he was concentrating to fill the test. Why was he sitting with his eyes closed? Well, considering that during his test, there was myself, Luke, um, his, his paralegal, and one guard standing out behind myself. Luke was actually looking directly at that person who was actually, so from Luke's perspective, they were pulling faces at him. So I suggested to him that he closed his eyes, which is in actual fact a good thing to do anyway on a polygraph test. So when, before you ask the serious questions, do you ask shorter questions like, because Corinne said, are you sitting on a chair just to kind of make things accurate? How We, we ask 11 questions. Hmm. Um, so you're asking three relevant questions that was pertinent to the issue that he had. Then we ask three comparison questions, which are, we call them probable lies. We have a different system as well now called directed lie. But at that time, I used a probable lie. So I asked him questions that he could have failed, but we don't score. Um, then he's getting asked um, some known truths, like, are you sitting in a chair? Are you, is your name Luke? That type of um, question. They just give us a, an average baseline. Um, and then there are two irrelevant questions, which are uh, the, the think it's, um, just questions that we ask to introduce the whole issue to it. How accurate is a polygraph test? Well, under the American Polygraph Association uh, metadata information, they put their uh, polygraph test you know, between 90 to 95 percent. Um, it all depends on circumstances. It will depend on the person. It depends on the type of questions. Accuracy um, is, is measured, really, if the test is conducted correctly, asking direct, specific questions that are pertinent to that case. How easy is it to... Um, basically lie to a how basically how hard is it for a liar to pass a lie detector well in my opinion being a professional examiner you cannot pass the test if you are of sound mind then you cannot pass the test by lying on the test we have certain criteria and there are certain conditions which they have to abide by um, one would be like movement um, it's one of our biggest enemies um, so we use a, I use a movement sensor, which they sit on. There are also hand pads, feet pads, what they can do. I didn't have those during that time, but they're not requirement anyway. But the seat pad is an absolute requirement to have. Yeah, because I never used to have the seat pad because I put a, a clip up of Luke's polygraph test on my Twitter. Um, one of the questions you asked was, did he stab Jodie Jones? But she said no, but she passed. And people had us, obviously you're going to get people who are both sides believe in it, don't believe in it. One of the questions was, how do you stop a subject from flexing their anal sphincter? Um, what is the anal sphincter? Well, it's a, a muscle in, in the anus, um, uh -huh. which we would say that it, you know, don't squeeze your bottom together. Yeah. Um, what, the, what it comes down to is it isn't just about that, the sphincter muscle. Um, in old, in the older analog instruments, there was no movement sensors. So some people would try and train themselves on them where the, the observer, uh, the examiner had to observe them very carefully, um, to make sure that they were not moving, twitching, moving fingers, arms, muscles. Um, but it was very difficult because in an analog instrument, you are constantly uh, making changes on the instrument itself and it's all manual. You're using a pencil, you're marking the charts, you're marking everything. So it was quite a, a workload um, with, an, with a, an analog instrument. Yeah, because you've got the thing for the seat now that you showed me earlier. Well, this is all computerized polygraph oh. now. So this, this pad, the pad that you see in front of you, is a typical uh, type of uh, movement sensor that you would sit on. What it comes down to for me, I give instructions to each person. I want you to sit perfectly still. Once the blood pressure cuff is inflated, sit perfectly still and do not move. It's very difficult. Many people complain and say, I can't sit still. And then I give them a choice. 
you can either sit still or if you cannot sit still, there's no point in doing the test. Yeah. So court cases, you can't use like polygraph tests in court. Do you think there'll be anything in the future that maybe this can start happening? The reasons that I've been given from Home Office officials over many years was we've, we've been trying to get it recognised more in courts, etc., is that it is subjective. Uh, the results are subjective by each examiner. Um, they can be quality controlled by other examiners, by government examiners, if they wish to, to go down that route. This is the reason, the main reason that they give for not using it. It shouldn't be used as an absolute. It should be used as a tool. So if you have four suspects and you polygraph them all and two pass and two fail, then use the ones that fail that test to continue with a thorough investigation. Um, courts really shouldn't be that afraid of it because in a lot of cases, and one in question is Luke's, there is no evidence that Luke committed this crime. As far as I've seen, nobody has produced a single piece of evidence to me to say that Luke was involved in the, in the murder of Jody Jones. Could Luke have trained himself to pass this test? Well, there are lots of uh, people that, that say that you can meditate. Um, when you ask a question on the test, they have to answer immediately. They have been through the question several times because there's no secrets or surprises. So they have to answer the questions immediately. Now, if somebody is meditating, somebody is thinking, they, you know, lots of people tell me that if I think bad thoughts, if I think of something more horrific than, than you know, what I'm being asked questions about, um, that will override the, the function of, of the test. But I, what I say to them is, if you can do that, you can possibly be thinking of something, listen to what I'm asking you and answer immediately, then there's something completely wrong because it doesn't work like that. You have to answer immediately on the test. For two people to be lying on the same case and both passing, what's the odds or the chances of that happening? Um, well, that is depending. Is that using two separate examiners? Yeah, no, well, the one's separate, the same as yourself, um, having Corinne and having Luke on the polygraph. If both were lying and both passing, how... How big a percentage would that be for both? I wouldn't even like to calculate that that possibility um, because I take each case as it comes. Um, I have nothing to gain from passing somebody, especially for such a horrific murder. Um, I'm horrified at what happened, and that could be my family, that could be my friend's family, could be anybody there. So it's not for me to be in judgment of whether... Um, that person, I want to get that person off because they seem a nice person. I don't have a figure to give you about two people passing or failing a test, um, you know, it, it, without without good reason. So from your, your own point of view for Luke passing, do you think he killed Jodie Jones? Absolutely not. And Corinne Mitchell, do you feel as if she was involved in some way from this case to help her son? Absolutely not. Because, again, I'm always trying to sit in the fence with this because it's such a touchy subject. And um, But for this was one of the reasons, because of the polygraph results. Have you ever made a mistake? Not to my knowledge. Um, I've not been sued, and I've been doing this for 14 years. I've not been sued. No one's, no one's challenged me to take me to court or any other reason. Usually when a person fails a test, we do, um, what I do, a post-test interview with that person. Um, because if you can then get a confession from that person, and it is an interview, by the way, it's not an interrogation. But um, that will be standard practice in every single fail that somebody has. And you've been into prisons before and interviewed paedophiles and murderers before? Yes, I have. Is this just in England? Uh, no, I've, I've done this in Scotland and Wales. And, Sc and Wales? Yes. Because it's high profile cases also and when people get, if people fail, what do they do with the results? Within a prison? Yeah. Um, that's entirely up to that person. They do sign a consent form. Now when they're incarcerated, then I, I often get them, well, most times I get that person to give me consent to give one of their family, friends, a lawyer or somebody else um, that information because they shouldn't be able to hide that information. Because for paedophiles, 
we spoke earlier and s- s- some of the polygraph tests work for them getting out released from prison, is that correct? Um, no, they don't take a polygraph test to get out of prison. Uh, under under the, the National Offender Management Scheme, um, where they do PSOT testing, the the person is going to be released anyway, um, and that, that goes through, obviously, for their with their probation. They are usually just tested on their licence conditions. So once they come out of prison, they have a set of licence uh, agreements that they've arranged with it, and they will be tested on those alone. They're not being tested on the original crime. That's already been judged, and they've already been sentenced for that. So they get tested for the stuff that they're on licence for? Yes, and that might be about you, you know, using internet, might be about using contacting people. Around schools. Uh, yeah, being around schools, but contacting other people um, who may also be into paedophilia, etc., etc. And so. if they fail that, do they go back to prison? Uh, I believe that on the, the rules change slightly all the time, but I believe that they have to fail too, um, and then they could most likely go back to prison. So why is that help those cases but yet not others that's a question i'm baffled with myself um because it's it's i wouldn't say it's a double standard what i would say is if you're able to return a prisoner back to prison for failing their license conditions which they could do if even drink drivers it can be for anything but particularly with polygraph um i think that the police should be allowed to use them for investigative purposes and I think that would be a great tool for them to use and it would save a great deal of time money and effort is the polygraph are they progressing more as well getting higher percentages becoming Um, more accurate not particularly um it's the the accuracy is already very high I mean we we get a lot of people a lot of clients say this is a hundred percent well the only thing that's a hundred percent is that we're all going to die one day it used to be death and taxes, but um, a lot of people evade taxes as well <laughs> today. But uh, I think the accuracy is as high as it can be um, in in lots of terms. Yeah. See for the privacy and looks case as well. In the prison, should they have got more privacy when they done the polygraph test? Um, the, the, the issue with I mean, this this done in a legal room, so it's not done in in open open um, visiting room. And there was glass panels around this room <clears> also. No, the, uh, there was only Luke. Um, that there was no glass panels at the side that were people were in. It was only the viewing thing, which is a good thing. You need the, a guard. I mean, nobody knows what a prisoner. Not talking about Luke, uh, a prisoner in particular may do or not do, especially when they're given the information from myself because I do tell them their result, um, because that's a requirement for me. Uh, but it's um, it wasn't really for that particular person to be making faces at Luke to cause any problems. Do you do the... Excuse me. So that's okay. <coughs> do you do... Um, how, how quickly do you get your results? You can have the results within 10, 15 minutes. You, 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 uh, you're scoring the entire time you're there. I also review the charts several times before I um, proffer the uh, result to the person. So what is wired up then when you're doing a polygraph? Is it heart rate, sweat? You're using a blood pressure cuff, um, and at that time, um, oh, you can use a, an arm cuff, which is a simple cuff that the doctor uses. But back in 2012, um, Lafayette also brought out a, th- a thumb cuff, which is uh, less pressure on the body, and it takes away a lot of the stress and from the arm. And it was perfectly okay to use. It was later, I think it was around 2015, that it was recommended that we don't just use that on its own. But it's all about the tracing at the end of the day. Excuse me. That's okay. <clears throat> if you've got a good tracing from the blood pressure, um, then there's no reason why you shouldn't use it. But that's, that's measuring relative blood pressure, and pulse rate, and blood volume. And then we use two pneumographs, which are convoluted pieces of tubing that go across the chest for the thoracic breath breathing, and one across the stomach, and that's measuring from the diaphragm. Um, they just, the convoluted tubing, so as you breathe in and out, they move marginally. It changes the pressure inside um, and the volume of air inside and gives you a reading for their respiration. So if you lie, does it, how does that 
what does every one of them trigger? The they line? all figure. There is um, two finger plates which will go on their two fingers of their right hand, which are picking up electrodermal activity from the sweat gland. Um, they're a very important part. So they're all fairly weighted. Uh, they're not equally weighted, but you need to have all functions working um, to make sure that you're using the right thing. How was Luke before he got his polygraph test? I, I only met him, I've only met Luke once, and that was on the day. We had um, a conversation for about an hour and 10, I think it was about an hour and 10 minutes. What I wanted, I already had a big background about the case. Um, but I wanted to hear it from Luke's own perspective. So he gave me um, a run through of his day, what was happening during that day and all of the events that run up to um, that day completely, where he went out looking for him and he mentioned about his dog, which was a hunting dog, um, et cetera, et cetera. So he, he went through the entire day with me and then I obviously asked him questions whether he's involved or not. Can you look at people through body language also and think, just just guessing um, who's guilty and who's not guilty? You should never, never yeah, even not. try to do that. Yeah. I mean, you can use micro expressions from the face. That's not my job to do that. Um, that's for a, like an investigation or just doing an investigative interview. You can use those tactics. But it, you, that way, if you're making an assessment on the person, then you're now corrupting your results that you're, you've got. So don't look for any other information. Just use the polygraph results. A lot. Of, so when you're, is there a lot of telltale signs though for people who are innocent? Are they a lot more calmer? Are they a lot more fidgety? And you'll find that even many innocent, most innocent people are probably more terrified, because one of the one of the factors which I actually introduced to them during the interview is. Um, is that they're always fearful of something. This is the unknown for a person who's never taken a polygraph before. It's uh, a lot of them say it's pseudoscience. There are lots of skeptics. There is more information on the internet about why not to take a test than there is about the positive side. But, you know, that's for that person to have researched before they get to me. I always introduce to a person that they have to think about me. Am I... Um, do I take a position where I don't like the look of them, where I think they're, you know, they think that they're guilty of something? But I try to, I have a discussion about that because I want to dispel that from them because I am the unknown. Um, they've never met me before and they have, they've put their trust in what I'm doing. Because if you were innocent, and obviously you're going to be scared with some questions and thinking, I mean, if, if you're thinking that you did that, could that potentially affect it? No, or does it just all still go down to heartbeat stuff anything you, in my opinion Can you your in my to opinion actually believing that you did do it not just in polygraph but in life i don't believe that you can talk yourself into doing anything if you know that you've stolen if you've committed a a, a murder you've um, committed a sexual offense it doesn't matter what it is you know if you've done it and um, this one of the issues that we have is say a, a habitual thief for instance if i can give you this example but a habitual thief who steals every day, then what's the point in asking them about, do you, do you ever steal or did you steal this? You've got to target the actual thing that you're there, there for, not generalised stealing. But if they've stolen a laptop or something of value, then you can target on that item to focus them because otherwise stealing is just a, a, an everyday job for them. But So you have to target with something specific. Whereas in Luke's case, hopefully Luke has never killed anybody, you know, ever. Um, but if he killed somebody before, you would have to then use about Jody and about the stabbing and about everything else. So you've got to focus that that question. If you can, you obviously Luke's trying to get his retrial, which I think he deserves. If could you did you forward your results on to anyone? My results, um, including the, the video, was um, was sanctioned by Shots Prison. Um, it's quite unusual to be able to video in a prison. Um, it was one of the first times I've ever been allowed to, but I asked for permission. Um, I signed a, um, a confidentiality report from the prison not to release it to anybody without their permission, which I then did. I complied with that. I then got a letter from the prison to say that I could release it to the, his lawyer, 
and then their lawyer she put it on YouTube. So, because mm. if Luke is innocent, then it's potentially one of the biggest miscarriages of justice in the UK for a 14-year-old boy to get sent down for a murder charge that he didn't do. But again, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not... I'm just here to kind of shed light on it and show some facts because I believe people are starting to look at it differently, including myself. When I, it was Joe Steele who was on the show and he spoke about this case and when he mentioned, look, I kind of had a feeling that, why did they say that? I, I kind of, because what I knew Luke as was a child killer, what I knew Luke as what I believed in the papers and then once you actually start looking into it, once you actually start looking at the evidence, you start to realise that there was no... If this goes to a retrial, then there's nothing there to actually convict Luke of a murder. So it's horrific to think and understand that from Jodie Jones's family, it's horrific that they've lost their daughter, but it's also horrific for Corrine if her son's innocent and he's in there for the last 16 years fighting for his, fighting for his life. Going forward for yourself, Terry, where do you see the polygraph tests coming into play in courts maybe in the next five years or so? Unofficially, um, and I have to say unofficially because nobody official from uh, the government will give us information, but unofficially, I am sort of aware that the police may start to expand the uh, the coverage of polygraph into other areas, which I think will be a great idea. And I have I've spoken to several senior police officers in the past. And I think they should be using it for criminal activity, people trafficking, um, even even on refugees of some description when they have no papers um, to make sure that they are genuine. Because today you can use polygraph for a, a whole host of issues. We, it's in, 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 I'm impossible to believe that we still have slavery in the UK. Um, and it would be a good tool uh, to use on a, a, a subject to find out whether they are telling the truth. Is there any cases for you, Terry, that you would like to work on with the polygraph test? Is there any people you would like to have on it to ask them questions? I've already done several very high-profile cases which um, have been going on um, before Luke, um, and some of those have gone into the European court um, because of the way that they've been um, used. There are several cases that also, most of those, and I would say, well, actually all of them, have no evidence for that person. And I find it impossible to believe that a person can be incarcerated for life when they have not committed a crime. And I always try to put it into the perspective of that could be you or me. Um, false allegation, no evidence, but a jury convicts you on what's being said in a courtroom. And also trial by the media plays a big part as well. Trial by media is a is a horrendous uh, thing to happen because um, especially even with, with men today as well, the man is named immediately, but the girl is not. For even, even when it's sexual abuse and those things are, are high profile every day. Um, if this was the United States, they would probably polygraph both of those people. They'd, they'd polygraph the alleged perpetrator if he passes, then polygraph the accuser. And nobody wants to re-victimise, and that's the biggest issue of all, nobody wants to re-victimise a victim um, of anything. But sometimes if a false allegation is made, then that person needs to be in question. Yeah. How much do they use the polygraph in the USA? Oh, it's massive. Is that? It's, uh, the federal government use it for all federal employees, um, private practice has got some restrictions on pre-employment screening, etc. But there, are, but it's used widely. There are sort of five, six thousand examiners um, in the United States. How long do you need to train to be to understand the test? And the initial training um, is eleven weeks. Um, it doesn't sound a lot, but it's actually a sixteen-week course put into eleven weeks. Intense. It's a very intense course. Uh, you don't get any chances of retaking exams and tests. So if you if you can't keep up and you fail, then you you go. Um, but it's very expensive. You've got to do it in the United States in, in, because I believe that that's the best place to do it. It's been there for 98 years. Yeah. See, I'm all for the polygraph test because obviously it's not 100% accurate, as people say. But for using it, there's got to be a high percentage and give you a rough idea for stuff like maybe priests, people who work in schools, people who's working with children, to give them a test 
and see because I believe there's more paedophilia on it's paedophilia is on the rise and there's a lot more people going to prison for it. I think it'd be a good idea to for certain jobs to people getting put under a polygraph test. Do you do you believe that also? I do believe in that because um, under the, the old you know CRB checks and then the DBS checks that they have now for certain jobs, but you uh, there are people that get through those because if you don't have a criminal record then you are issued with one straight away. And yet there is a, a huge tendency here um, within the church, not just within the Catholics, there's, there's all sorts of churches and, and the way that the religious are working with, with paedophilia and child abuse. Um, and then there's all the, the school clubs, uh, scouts and sea cadets. And I, and, and I mention in these particularly because I've dealt with all of them. Uh, where people are accused. And some of those are false allegations. Um, schools, uh, one of the very first tests I did 14 years ago was on a head teacher who was accused because he refused to allow, uh, I'm not going to say where it was or anything, but he refused to allow um, the girls and boys to wear jewellery in a school as a new head. And then all these allegations came out about him. He passed his test. He passed all the investigation but he still couldn't resume his career, yeah. Because mud sticks. Yeah, it can be sad as well. Even even if Luke did get a not guilty, does people still believe that it was guilty? Yeah, it's it's got a, it's got a place. It's just um, it's okay having that place, but we need the authorities to actually go along with that with that. And even if they're using their own probation service, police officers, whatever they wish to use, then that's fine. But abuse in this country and serious crime, um, in my opinion, isn't being addressed correctly. Yeah. Um, people getting off with technicalities from serious criminal activity. Um, and then there are the innocent people that are being convicted because the jury said so. Um, and I think that sometimes the juries need to be uh, better selected for uh, certain cases, for sexual cases, uh, financial cases. And if you use that, I think that method might be better. Yeah, for juries to be more maybe professional and more professional and yeah. aware of that of that type yeah. of issue. Yes. Yeah, definitely. And because obviously, when Corinne did the test, it's more peace of mind for herself as well, and more peace of mind that it's not like I told you so, but it's to say all the fingers have been pointed for so long. If you look at also the Madeleine McCann case, the Madeleine McCann case, where people have constantly pointed the fingers to. Madeline's parents do you think it'd be a good idea for them to do a polygraph test to to say basically look enough's enough stop pointing fingers I wouldn't offer them a polygraph test but if you look at um, and, and I and I don't take too much notice of newspapers but a headline on the Sun newspaper a few years ago was from um, um, Madeline McCann's mother who stated I will do a polygraph test if the police ask me now, at that period, the police did not use it. That's over four years ago. The police now do use polygraph. So why not take away the smear and take a polygraph test, both both her and Jerry uh, McCann, take this, and if they can pass that test, then the smears have to stop. But, you know, the, because the, that's where it all comes into it. So it's not about what I believe in one way or another. I have no knowledge about most of that case. Mm -hmm. um, and all the evidence is very obscured anyway. Mm -hmm. But if, in my opinion, as an examiner, somebody, you know, they, they should take that test. Yeah, for such a high profile case and yeah. for people looking into it. And it's, again, if people, no matter what you're doing in life, people are always going to judge. But because that's such high profile and people have called out for that so many times and it's not their place to say because if they did feel it they'll say it's not 100 percent anyway well it's also the case that they've had a great deal of public money and still only was it two weeks ago they got another bunch of money from public money to further that case so spending a few hundred quid on a, on a polygraph test um why why not do it mm -hmm. and clear yourself and clear or clear the air completely for that person that's, but then I would say that because I, I'm in polygraph. But if I was ever accused of a serious criminal act, I'll take a polygraph test every day of the week because I don't want that slur on me. And can you video your poly, or you, or you videoed Luke Mitchell's, but can you video any polygraph test that you do also? We, um, we 
it's advisable to put to video virtually every test mm-hmm. um especially with anybody with a sexual crime they get videoed and can who can use the footage can the person who's getting tested use the footage okay um that's if they've got a lawyer but you don't really want to give it to that person because you don't know what's going to happen and if a, if a family member got hold of it and they didn't like that person they could abuse it and put it on and there are a lot of tests on on youtube and and other social media sites so it's it's just being careful about what you do but primarily serious cases you you need to be videoing that because if they make a confession then you need to be able to hand that to the right authorities yeah. so have you got the rights though if the like, police are that came and spoke to you about say someone came to you for a test did the test and the police found out do you have the legal right to speak to the police of your due contracted to say nothing um you there is a confidentiality agreement between between myself and a client however and i have done this several times if the police um ask me for information I do request that I comply with the law and I ask them to get a court order and then I will willingly give over all of that information because I have to protect obviously myself and my business from just handing information over. Yeah. Um, so sometimes um, the, a court right over, uh, supersedes someone else's rights So on a serious case. Yeah. So why do you believe there's so many sceptics towards it when there's so much proof also that you've provided that they do work. It's hard to trick. You can't really fail it if you study it. So if somebody, if you were to study the test, Terry, if you were to set your mind on it to fail, to to believe that you could pass, how long would that take to trick it? Is there men in the SES who can trick polygraph tests? Is there? Or is that a myth? I don't know. Uh, well, I, I think it's a myth. Mm-hmm. Because a person, if, if there was a highly trained special forces guy uh, who was under interrogation, um most times you see you mustn't have anybody harmed so if somebody came in if they've they've captured a special forces guy and they've already now beaten the guy up roughed him up he can't take a polygraph test anyway they have to come to you what i call clean so you have to see that person right all that person's got to do is make movements they, it's not about training your mind. Um, personally, I don't think that anybody can can alter their blood pressure, their respiration to that sense. You can you can meditate if you want to, but that takes time to meditate, and you haven't got that luxury in answering questions. Um, you've got five minutes to answer eleven questions with a gap in the middle of them, but you've got to answer them immediately. So if now you're getting a five second gap between me asking the question and and them answering, that's already given a reaction because there's a thought process. They should know the answer so you can answer yes, no immediately. So people that don't comply with that have obviously got something to hide. You get people who fake that they're asleep. But of course, when we're reading their charts and looking at their charts, you can see that they're wide awake. You can see that the tracings are perfectly okay. Because they're in a modern test with a computerized, we actually don't look at the subject. We have, I have them, they have their back to me. I don't need to see them. I want them to focus on nothing. I want them to look straight ahead and see virtually nothing. Otherwise, they're searching your face for information and they're searching for, for things that you're doing. So there, there isn't a way in my mind of doing this, and I've done a lot of research, that I think that a, um, a competent professional examiner would easily see through somebody using tactics. They're called countermeasures. Uh, do you feel as if you're constantly um, justifying because there's so many sceptics out there? Do you feel as- the sceptic. I'm a sceptic in lots of things. Uh, I'm a sceptic for uh, you know lots of different things that go on around the world. Um, and people talk about aliens. People talk about gods. People talk about all sorts of things. I'm a sceptic as well. Everybody is about something. Um, even about our phone service, you know, you're sceptical. They say even your broadband, which I had a conversation yesterday. They're telling me I have 100 meg and actually I'm looking at 30. So you, you're always sceptical about something. With polygraph, it is a very uh, s- subjective thing for people to want to, to, to understand. The majority of people that do not like things like um, polygraph or have something bad to say about it, usually don't want to take one. 
So if they are, if you, I mean, if you go into a, even a basic relationship one and somebody doesn't want to take the test, they will say, I don't believe in that. You know, that's, that's, uh, that's all. That would uh, have been me 10 years ago, yeah, Terry, but, and but, all but my so, ex-girlfriends. So you're always going to find somebody's going to have a reason not to do a test. Hmm. Um, if they were in for a theft today, but they didn't steal anything from their employer, but five years ago they stole something from that same employer, it's going to show up because it's associated. Because one of the questions is, have you ever stolen from your employer? So they may not be afraid about what they're here for today, but they might be afraid about something they've done previously. Yeah, in the past that maybe. And so they want those people will be skeptical about doing the test. Yeah. Anyway, maybe they've got some skeletons that. Yeah, that's right. It could get um, through up in their face and they say, "Well, I don't believe in a test. I've said it for years." I'm not. I'm not. I'm not in business to convince people. And I, I'm not a salesman. I don't convince people. If they come to me or phone me and ask me about doing a polygraph test, I tell them what I expect from them. No alcohol, no drugs. They've got to be in good condition. There mustn't be no domestic violence. They have to want to come to see me and I'm not going to sell it to them. I give them a cost and I give them you know, a time and appointment. They can either make that appointment or they can go and, and think about it and not come at all. Or so, go with somebody else. So if I was drunk or full of drugs, could that jeopardise the test? Absolutely. Could it, it make you trick the test or is it just... It's not about tricking the test. I mean, one of the first things I look at with every single person, including yourself, and I met you in the car park, is a habit. I look at eye dilation. Mm -hmm. So if you've got, you're out in the sunlight, and if you had huge dilation... My first question, if you were coming for a test, my first question when you come in the office would be, do you have an eye problem? And if you said, no, I've got perfectly, my eyes are okay, I'd ask you why your eyes are dilated in the, in the sunlight. Why are they like that? Um, and if you can't give me a reasonable answer and say that you have a defect or you've just taken you know, eye drops and things, I'm not going to test you. Um, so there's lots of things that you have to think about. If somebody comes in smelling of alcohol, I don't test them. It isn't that that alcohol, one drink, is going to affect the test. But if you fail that person, they're going to use that to say the test is void. I'd had a drink. I've taken some drugs. They have to sign a consent form. I go through a medical history with them. I go through whether they've then been taking drugs and stuff for 48 hours. I go through a whole procedure. Process. And they sign that. Mm -hmm. When I finish the test, I do get people say, oh, I forgot to tell you, I, um, I took a diazepam and things like that. If they've taken diazepam, you're going to see it on their chart. You're going to see the lowering of the blood pressure. But So all, you're going to, all they're doing is, is now looking for an excuse of, to get out of that test. Yeah, it's given me a better understanding of it because a lot of people, the way you've put it, has, there is a lot of sceptics no matter what in life. I'm... I'm a, Everything's a, I'm skeptic. Everything and I'm a, a, um, everything's a conspiracy to me unless I see it in my own eyes, unless I do it myself. But for people looking in, I think it will give people a better understanding because it's not just a case of you stick wires on people and ask them questions. There's a whole procedure that comes with it. You also ask questions prior to the test about things to see if they're telling lies or telling the truth. I think it's a great thing, Terry. I, I genuinely do. I think it's a good thing. Yes, people might say it's not 100%, but it still gives you a, a, a route and an angle that you can look at and, and question it more and get into more detail. Would you do ever? Would you ever do a live debate? I actually offered a live debate after Luke's test. Um, the um, I had Sky News call me to do an interview and a couple of others, and they told me that there were two eminent psychologists in Scotland who questioned um, my test and said that Luke was meditating, Luke was in a trance, Luke was doing all these things. It's all speculation. And if you read the newspaper or the, from the paper that they published it in, I challenged both of those psychologists to a live TV debate, of which they were anonymous, by the way, of which they declined. Um, if they're going to decline it, they shouldn't make a comment in the first place. That's my opinion. I'm standing by Luke's test. I feel dreadfully sorry for jo for Jodie's family. Um, it's a dreadful thing to have happened to her family. But I, I, all I would say is Luke did not do this. And he is a victim as well because that's the way I see it. I stand by him 100% in everything. And I always have done. 
Yeah, and it's uh, and fair play to you for that because it's um, this is your job and it's what you believe in. Yeah. For how can people get in contact with you, Terry, if they ever want to work with you in the future? Because I think a lot more people. I don't think it's used enough in Scotland, but now I think once they see this, a lot more questions will be asked and realise, okay, well, if he can give answers, then it can maybe help potentially other victims. It's actually used in Scotland quite a lot. Is that? Well, I've never, uh, really, I've I, never seen I, that. I, I've actually personally visited about at least 10 prisons in Scotland. Mm -hmm. um, it then, because the precedent was set, but then there was a um, right across the whole of the, great, of the United Kingdom, it was actually uh, every time you applied, because you have to apply to go into a prison, and it can take um, a few weeks, can take a couple of months. You have to write and get all the permissions. Uh, but they, they stopped me going in for different reasons. It could be a security alert, and it then became untenable to, to go forward. Um, it's going back probably uh, five years ago. I assisted the uh, Scottish Prison Service with um, to streamline the uh, entry to go into Scottish prisons. And I assisted them with all the information. We had a lot of communications, lots of letters and emails back and forth. And this was supposed to help streamline the whole issue to get people to be able to take a test. From the day that that was finished, we never got into another prison mm -hmm. for whatever reason. And I, I don't know why. Um, People should not have anything to fear. The authorities should not fear anything. Um, the authorities use polygraph. And they've been using the polygraph since, I believe, the 1950s. Um, even they used them in GCHQ and in Cheltenham um, back in the 80s. And they had a debate in Parliament about the results, all about spies. So they've been using it. And it's a double standard in some ways that if you can use it for one thing, it should be available to everybody. Um, but not abused. So you can't keep saying, you know, I'm, I want to do a polygraph test because I, I didn't steal a, a, a screwdriver out of B&Qs or something like that. There are other, uh, there are yeah. other um, DIY places. <laughs> yeah. But the whole point of it is, if somebody's accused of a very serious crime involving other people, especially children and, and, and they're victims, and they are victims unless proven, then you should use every single tool in the box to be able to assist that person. Mm -hmm. And if they fail it, then they have no one to, you know, to blame but themselves. And that way it justifies what they've been given in court. Do you think you're a fully authority? Do you think you can be a nuisance then in some ways? Because if they're getting convictions of people who are victims and who are wrongly convicted and that sheds light on it and opens up a new case, then you've got to question the people who worked on the case. You have to question an awful lot of things where, um, I mean, this is not having a, I, I believe in the, in, the, in the Crown Prosecution Service, but I also believe that they get cases wrong. Sometimes they jump. Why would, why would a CPS jump into a case that they have no evidence to, to back it up? And that's what our system used to be. You know, you're innocent till proven guilty. Pro provide that information and then you are, then you will, you know, you, you will be released. You're free. Um, there's an awful lot of people I don't understand today commit a serious crime and they're let out on bail and then they skip bail. You know, we've got a high profile one now with this speedboat guy. Um, where he, why would he be on bail if he's up on a, a manslaughter or a murder charge? Mm -hmm. But that's our system today. We don't have the resources, um, in my opinion. We don't spend enough on prisons. We don't spend enough on policing. We have a desperate shortage of police. In, in the whole country, in, in the whole of the you know, Great Britain, mm -hmm. we have a desperate shortage of police. The money is, is around, but it's being used on other things. Certain things. We need we need to be protected with our military, with our with our policing, and our justice system needs to be robust. Yeah. Um, and in my opinion, and it is only my opinion, um, that it's falling apart. So, for the Jerry McHale thing as well, Terry, they closed the show down. Do you think the way they... Obviously, it doesn't work on the show, but do you think the way they were using the test? Because some of their guests looked intoxicated. They didn't look mentally stable. And that's me just judging from appearance, but they don't look as if they're using the test in the correct way. Do you think it was the right idea to close that show down? 
I watched the Dispatches program yesterday. It was I, re, I looked it on Catch Up TV because I was told about it. I was actually asked to make a comment about what they did on that show by by the producers of Dispatches. I don't know what they do on that show. What I can tell you is that the examiners that they use are professional polygraph examiners. Uh, one of them trained in exactly the same place as myself. The, as far as I'm aware, they do correct polygraph tests. But some of those tests are not done on that day. They're done a week before. So no, it's not just coming from a test. So if they're intoxicated on that show, perhaps that's at a later date. Um, I mean, the person who gave the information on that dispatches program to say he saw beer and alcohol being passed around, and, and he's supposed to be a producer. Why not be open and why show? Why not show his face and give his name? And uh, because he's anonymous. Why not put them in the lie detector? Well, the whole point of it is that's it. But the people that are being shot for this, I'm not talking about Jeremy Cole uh, in the way he conducts himself on his show. It's not a show that I watch. Right. Um, whether it should be closed down or not, it, there's plenty of other entertainments um, of a similar nature. We go back to Jerry Springer's show, which was the sort of origin of these things. But as far as I'm aware, the polygraph tests on that show have been done professionally and correctly. And how many times have they been sued for not doing them correctly? And I know that a lot of people came out on that show and said that this happened, that happened when I was on there. Well, and, and a lady on there said... I'd already signed the contract, so we had to go through with it. Well, what contract? You just don't have to take part. Mm -hmm. You know, you can walk out of that. It's a TV show. This isn't a court. Um, so I believe there's a, they're always going to get people that are um, have been let down in some way. Um, it's not something that I'd like to get involved in uh, at all. I believe that ITV, the way they've reacted, wanted to end that show. Yeah. Um, that's my personal opinion mm. because it was too quick. They haven't shut down Love Island and yet two people committed suicide. Yeah, and and, and they're still running episode. it. And they and I heard that they said that they're not using the polygraph on Love Island anymore. They have never used a polygraph on on Love Island. Mm -hmm. They used a toy you can buy on eBay. <laughs> it's a little gadget that they put <laughs> on the chest uh, and things like that. They are not proper polygraphs. Mm -hmm. And it's going back to people abuse polygraph by saying that this is polygraph. So voice stress analysis is not yeah. polygraph, but it gets that same yeah. title. But that's not good for you, for a professional in the field, for people to be using them and then using that as a professional, basically saying it's a professional polygraph. Yeah. When the answers are probably all over the place, they're probably sitting there drunk as well. They're probably intoxicated from the night before. It's difficult for some of these professionals yourself to see that. And people are jumping on that because the majority of Britain watch Love Island. Not so, me. Yeah, <laughs> or me. So it's but, it's, but it's, uh, it, I mean, it, there, there's, a, there's a, a great deal of audience for this this type of show. And it obviously brings in money, otherwise sells, they wouldn't do it. It's it a sells, good sales, yeah. good sales. If they're going to do something on it, then they did the same with Big Brother. They used uh, lie detectors on there. They were not lie detectors. Um, they were using the same type of gadget that you can buy. You know, I think they cost about 80 quid or something like that. So if you're going to do something, do it properly. Mm. Make, make it a bit more authentic. But, of course, nothing, nothing is authentic on those, on those types of shows. Uh, they're good entertainment for the people that want to see them. You know, um, I, I don't mind what people have. That's personal choice. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the, uh, the, the crew of people on people on like Jeremy Cole's show are being vilified over innuendo um, and, and, and sort of people that have failed tests. I mean, the people that I've failed on a test, I actually got abused in Stanstead Airport some years ago <laughs> just by a man walking over to me and calling me some very nasty names. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I, I kept looking at him and looking at him and he walked off and I realised that I'd probably done a test with him about four or five years ago and failed him. Hmm. And I, I still, to this day, I can't remember much about it. But he just said, you ruined my life. Hmm. Um, but And that was it. So people are disgruntled. But you're going to get that. But that's the only yeah. one I've ever had. Yeah. The only one. You're going to get that in your line your line of work. Because a lot of people who are on the Jeremy Kyle show as well denied. Oh, it's freak, it's fraud, uh, it's, it's not true. Well, I've, I get a lot of complaints. I've had I've people phone up, um, even only a couple of weeks ago, somebody's phoned me and said, 
I've just done a polygraph test on the Jeremy Carl show and I failed and I want a new test. And I said, listen, I don't retest. I said, um, it's, it's unprofessional to go and do that because if they've been done a proper test, I said, if you've got a, an argument, then go back to the producers of the show. Why are you phoning an, just somebody you've picked out a phone book? Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes, you know, you listen to what they're saying, but you still don't know if that's fact because none of that information is going to come back. Um, and I've written to, in my earlier days, I wrote to the Jeremy Carl show and said, this person claims that this, this and this happened. You don't get a response. Mm -hmm. So there's no comment. It's a waste of my energy and time. So. so if someone does a test with you, Terry, and they fail, they won't get another one? I would not do another test. What about if they pass and somebody wanted another one? Would you do that also? Would you? You don't. I wouldn't retest somebody. My, if you retest them, and you you can't use the same questions anyway, mm. because you shouldn't do that. But if you retest them, that means you don't believe your first one. Mm. Stand by what you do. If they want to go to somewhere else and get another test, that's fine. They can do that. Um, but it, it professionally. Uh, what we would do is if somebody came to me and said, look, I had a test a month ago with, with this person and I want to know who it was. I don't, I don't really care about the result, but I would like to know who it is. Professional courtesy, I would ring that examiner mm -hmm. and say, this client of yours has requested I do a second test. Do you have any objections? And why would they want a second test? If they said, I don't want you to do it, that's it, it's finished. Mm -hmm. And that's professional courtesy. How hard is it for you, Terry, to be do those tests for people who's wrongly convicted and not get emotionally attached after that? Um, you try not to be emotionally attached, um, and which I don't in lots of ways. I think it's, uh, I think it might be me as a person, but you cannot form that attachment. And I don't also speculate for that person. I mean, I'll do this interview with you today, um, but I'm giving you facts about Luke's, Luke Mitchell's case the facts of it i'm not going to speculate into who did it or who might have done it and those type of things because that's not my job um i'll stand by my my tests every single day of the week pass or fail many people fail tests um but, but that's their business and i'm i have to be professional enough to tell them and i tell them face to face sometimes they don't want me to have a post-test interview and sometimes they do but if I can get them to sit in that seat for a little bit longer, you often then get a disclosure um, and, a, and a confession. Not many times, you know, it might be 10% of the time. Um, but if it makes it more satisfying to know that mm -hmm. they now realise they've been caught. How can people get in contact with you, Terry? Um, I have a website, which um, they, can, they can contact me through that. It's got several phone numbers on, and my email address, uh, et cetera. Just Terry Marlins? Yeah. Um, no, it's uh, UK Polygraph Services. Okay. Um, you can find me on Google. Um, you can research me, mm -hmm. find out who I am, what I am. I talk to people on the phone, and I, I, I talk them. I've talked to a lot of people out of having a test. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you often get, a, especially a young couple, been together three months, and they say, I need to have a test. My boyfriend doesn't trust me. And yeah. I just say, throw him away and get a new one. Insecure, paranoid. Because that, that's not a relationship, mm -hmm. you know, um, after that. Somebody's got a long-term relationship and there's a problem. It, then then you can try and issue, to try and help them out with that. Mm -hmm. um, personally, I like, I like criminal cases. I like um, to do difficult cases and I will take on and not shy away. I wouldn't turn down a job um, because it's high profile. Is this a specific case that you would like to work on and ask questions on a polygraph test? Um, I wouldn't like to. I don't. I don't give names. Hunt around. Well, I don't hunt for work either. Yeah. I don't look around and say. I mean, I do know that some examiners are phoning up people and saying, "Why doesn't he do a polygraph test?" and things like that. Well, that's okay if you get and mm -hmm. if they get that, that's fine. But if you're going to do that, you need to do it for free. Um, because you shouldn't be bandying your services around yeah. looking for money. If you are, then there's, I think there's a problem for that person. Yeah, you've got to value your life. Um, but um, but it's, when you're asked to do a job, then you price it correctly and you go and do that job. Yeah. Um, but I would stand by, and, and some jobs I would do for free um, if I felt that there was um, injustice, mm -hmm. and I hate injustice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same. I think... But listen to your story, Terry, you put the shiters up a lot of people. People will be terrified because a lot of people have did things that 
they're scared to do it. Even the high profile names, that's why maybe they don't agree with polygraph tests because if they could put under it, there's a possibility they could fail. Including myself, if I was to get put under it with my ex-girlfriends, I would be saying you're a fraud and you're a liar. And there's a lot of shite they don't work because they feel that I maybe had in the past. But for anybody that's maybe wanting closure or want answers, contact Terry because what he's doing is unbelievable. And if you listen to the facts and look at his cases, and um, it's a great thing. And I hopefully it can get used more in the future to help more people who've been wrongly convicted and more people who can give peace of mind to maybe the mainstream media who have painted a different picture of them because basically sell papers but going forward for the future Terry and coming on the show today and telling your story and I really appreciate it and I wish you all the best for the future well, thank you thank Jay. you I appreciate that is there anything you'd like to finish up on or? all I would say is that I mean if you want to prove your innocence make sure you are innocent mm -hmm. because you're not going to pass a polygraph test using a professional examiner and be able to blag your way through to, to pass the test. It's not going to happen. So if you've done something wrong, you take the test. Be prepared for the result. Yeah, thanks, Terry. Appreciate that. No problem. Thank you very much.